precious person here this morning, every family, friends, relatives, but these are all our family, every single one of you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. We welcome our listeners today. We say that this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it, no matter what's going on in our life. We're going to rejoice and be glad. God's a good God, and He won't leave you the way you are. He's got plans to prosper you. Body, soul, and spirit, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Father God, we bring this service before you. We bring every precious person before you, Father God. We just thank you, Lord. Your word will work wonders in our hearts and in our lives, Father. You'll open the blind eyes, make the lame walk, the deaf to hear, Father God. We just thank you, Lord, those that are feeling down this morning and, and depressed, Father God. We pray, Father God, for them that the joy of the Lord is their strength, Father God. That you give them joy in their hearts today, Father God. Letting them know it's not the end, but it's only the beginning in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do in this place. Lord, that your Holy Spirit heal and restore every precious life, Father God. Father, that we have hope for the future, Father. We just thank you, Lord. We pray for Pastor Bob, who will preach. We pray that he preaches the oracles of God. Father God, we thank you, Lord, in this place today. We expect signs and wonders and miracles, Father God, because our hope, our source, our trust is in you today, Father, and every single day, Father. We just thank you for that right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I just want to read Psalm 1 to you. Blessed is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of the sinners, or sit in the seat of the mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither, whatever he does prosperous. Not so the wicked, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked will perish. So Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We leave all our cares and our troubles. We give it to you today, Father God. And we concentrate on your word and on your goodness in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We trust you're going to heal the broken heart today. Restore every broken life, Father God. Heal every sickness. And we just trust you for that right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we've come today to worship and adore you and to give you thanks for your goodness in our lives, Father. We say thank you, Father God, and today we give of our very best praise and worship to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's give of our very, very best in Jesus' mighty name.
Hallelujah. There's none like Jesus. And he deserves all the glory. He deserves all the honor. And we just praise him. And we worship him with every fiber of our Just bow your heads and just close your eyes. I just want to pray for our church or the church in Ukraine. In Jesus' name. Father God, we just speak peace over Ukraine and Russia, Lord, over that region of the world. Total peace, Father. Lord, the instigators, that they be brought to book, they be arrested, and they would be brought to justice in Jesus' name. But Father, I just pray for those families that have been separated and are so distraught, Lord, that they can be brought together again. Reunited in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Shame, well, I don't know if uh, most of the people that were in the church when we had the pleasure of dedicating little Haven at that time and praying for his healing and God healed him mightily there. Yes, absolutely. Were you here? Was yeah. Were you here? Yeah. Well, we know him. He was here. Yeah. Shame, and uh, he passed on yesterday. He went to be with the Lord. In Jesus' name. But we pray for the pure, true Lord in Martinique. Holy Spirit, you're the counselor, you're the comforter, and you are the strengthener. And I thank you. You flow through that family with your comfort and with your strength. In Jesus' mighty name, and we all said amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I don't know why, but God has been giving me some rather difficult messages recently. And uh, I'm not, you can't see the main side probably, but it doesn't matter. As long as you can get the gist of it. Uh, but I want to speak to you today about... Being without limits. The title of the message is, in fact, our God without limits. But I want to talk about us removing limits on our lives. In Jesus' name. Because sometimes we have many limits on our lives. We think we can't do this or we can't do that. And yet the Word of God says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. In Jesus' name. Where is my little clicker off here? In Jesus' mighty name. And sometimes we get down in the dumps because we think we can't do something and it's because we place limits and restrictions. You must know how much potential you have. You are created in the image of God and in the likeness of God, He created you. And God is a God without limits. Yes, he can do all things. I remember going overseas to visit my mom and dad before they went to be with the Lord. And uh, my dad, he comes from coal mining stock. And so he used to like to walk down to the pub on a Friday night to have a beer. And on this Friday night, I walked with him. And I thought maybe I would get an opportunity to speak to him about Jesus. And uh, we sat in the pub. <laughs> and I said to him, Dad, have you ever thought about heaven? And he was quiet for a minute. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm pretty sure I know what he would like to have said. But anyway. <laughs> and he said, well... If heaven exists, it must be very crowded up there. <laughs> and, uh, and it's because he didn't know God was a God without limits. Amen. God can cater for every single born-again believer. For everyone. God would have it that all men be saved according to the scriptures. And Jesus said we mustn't fear, we mustn't be afraid or worry or be anxious. Because he's gone to prepare a place for us. Because in his father's house there are many, many mansions in Jesus' name. And he promises he'll come and get us in the name of Jesus. So God is without limits. Jesus said in John chapter 10 and verse 10, The thief comes to rob, to steal and destroy, or to kill and destroy. And he said, But I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I think that's in John chapter 10, verse 10. I'm pretty sure it is. Yes, I've got it down here. In Jesus' name. 
So God has no limitations. And any limitations towards God and for ourselves are in our own mind. We limit ourselves in our thinking. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We, we have fraught relationships sometimes or sometimes relationships can get shaky because of the stinking thinking that goes on in our mind when Brother Martin is in fellowship with us. <laughs> but God does not limit us. He gives us freedom to choose and he says in his word, like I told you just now, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And we place a limit on our own abilities and also on God's ability, believe you me. Yeah. We sometimes do place limitations on God's ability. One day I'll teach, one of my favourite subjects to teach on is the anointing and I'll teach on it. But basically my, my uh, interpretation of that word anointing, when you go into the original Greek that it was written in, it's uh, God's ability on your availability. When you make yourself available yes. to God, yes. His ability will come and overshadow you. Right. That's what happened to Mary when she gave birth to Jesus. There was such a powerful anointing that took place when she conceived Jesus by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And uh, we mustn't place limits. We must trust God and let His limits control us. And we must believe, and what I'm going to say now doesn't sound Christian, but we must believe in ourselves. Because when we believe in ourselves as Christians, we're actually believing in the Christ that's inside of us. In Jesus' name. We need to believe just like Abraham. And he believed what God had promised God was able to do. You can read it in Romans chapter 4. He did not waver or tremble in unbelief or shake in unbelief. But he was fully persuaded and fully convinced that what God has promised, he was able to do. He went as far as building an altar. And when he built that altar, he placed his son Isaac on the altar to sacrifice him in obedience to what God had told him to do. But he knew that it wouldn't happen. He knew somehow he wouldn't have to sacrifice Isaac because God had told him, through your seed... I will bless you and I will bless the world. I will bless other nations. And as he raised the knife to slaughter his only son, which is a portrayal of Jesus on the cross, God called to him and stopped him. But we must believe just like he did. We must not waver in unbelief or doubt or fear, but we must be fully persuaded and fully convinced. Of God's word in our lives. He who shelters and the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my rock, He is my refuge, He is my fortress, in whom I trust. In Jesus' name. He says that every day, 12 o'clock, she goes out and confesses it over all of you here, over everybody that we know, and she prays it and takes authority over this COVID that's trying to destroy this world and has been unsuccessful, although many have lost their lives. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we need to be believing just like Abraham believed. We have to believe that God is able. God is able. Just say that with me. God is is able. able. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. And God is able to remove the limits that hold us captive. But you've got to believe that He's able. Our ministry, Jesus is Lord Ministries, was founded on this scripture that I'm going to read to you now in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Yes. And it says there, Now to Him yes. who is able to do exceedingly yes. abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works 
in us. That first part of that verse says, Now to him who is able, able. in Jesus' name. Whatever you're asking God for, whatever you're trusting the Lord yes. for, whatever you're thinking about, yes. when you come to the Lord and you're asking Him, whatever it is, He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you're asking or thinking. He is able. Abraham knew that. And as you walk with the Lord through this life, and you get closer to God, and you trust God more and more, and your faith grows more and more, you will find that He is able. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. I'm not going to turn there, but you must know there it says that we are made in the image and the likeness of God. Now, if God wasn't able, we wouldn't be sat here today. God just spoke the word and there was light. God just spoke the word. And there were seas and there was a separation between them and the land. And God just spoke the word and there was animals and birds in the air and fish in the sea. And then he created man and created man, he said, in our image, plural, in our image. In the image of Father God, the God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. That's how come we are a spirit being and we have a soul and we live in a body. And you can read all about that. In Genesis chapter 1. But uh, the image of God is that he is able. And if, if we are created in his image. If he's our father and we're his children. Then it's in our DNA that we are able. And when you believe in God and you're trusting God for things. You really need to trust him and believe him for great things. Great things. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And it doesn't matter. You know, I was praying for some. I asked somebody asked me once to go and pray for somebody that was on their deathbed with a disease. And uh, when I got to the house and I knocked on the door, the person who asked me to come opened the door and invited me in. But when I went in, I met resistance. And one of the sons said to me, uh, "Why do you come and give him, that's his father, false hope?" And eventually I was able to take him to one side and I said to him, listen, some hope is better than no hope. Some hope is better than no hope. And I ministered to the guy and all the rest of it and, and gave him some comfort and words of comfort. And he gave his heart to Jesus. And he did. He went on into eternity. But he went on into eternal life yes. instead of eternal damnation. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. And so we have to have this hope and sometimes our hope needs to be big sometimes we place limits on ourselves that we want to to be able to do things in such a small way meanwhile we should be doing things in a big way and you only know by listening to god let me tell you something i'm here as the pastor of this small church i have to work in order to pay the rent because the church is too small to give me a salary but let me say this to you We've had opportunity to go and pastor big churches. We've had opportunity to have been invited to take over a church in Ontario, in, in Canada. It was Ontario, wasn't it? In Canada. And down on the coast, there's two churches down there we were asked to go in and uh, take over in other places as well. And, uh, and when I got before God and I prayed, and God said to me, I've called you to Jesus' His Lord Ministries. So for some reason, God wants me here because there's somebody going to come into this church and there's going to be, they're going to be able to relate to my ministry and uh, get healed and restored, I suppose, in Jesus' name. All I know is it's better to obey God than to obey man in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now we must know, let's go to Mark chapter 9. We must know that all things are possible to those who believe. Do I have a congregation of believers here this morning? In Jesus' name. Then all things are possible to you if you believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All things are possible to those who believe. When you first start off in the ministry, or when you start off your walk, I should say, as a believer in God, and all of a sudden, God puts somebody across your path that's sick or infirmed and they need prayer. 
and uh, you're a little bit nervous about praying for them, and you pray for them, and maybe they don't get healed. And then it shuts you down. You see, the devil is very strategic. He'll shut you down so you don't pray for anybody because there is so much potential in you because it tells us in Mark chapter 16 that the believers will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Not they might recover, but they will recover in Jesus' name. And you know, uh, and it caused me a lot of confusion and a lot of spiritual anxiety, if you like. Why wasn't it working? And then God had to deal with me as I carried on walking in obedience to him. Father, but this... Sorry for interrupting. Do you remember he actually said he, the angel came to his bed and pulled out his leg. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah, what he, he said. The, yeah, yes. Yeah. So yeah, he saw it. And then God, he took me to this scripture because I was a baby Christian. And it was in Mark chapter 9 and verse 23. And I've always... I uh, often read this scripture and, and I know it off by heart now and it says Jesus said to him if you can believe if you can believe if you can believe if he's saying if you can believe there's a possibility that you can't believe that you may not believe but he said if you can believe and the only way you can believe is by getting into the word of God yes. and building your faith yes. Faith is acting on what you believe. So the Word of God is going to cause you to believe things differently. In Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We're like computers. As we grow up, the things that we face in the world, the things that we see at home and hear at home, the things we saw at school and heard at school, and even in the workplace, they're the things that have fed us and be written down on our hard drive. Now we become born again, that hard drive has to be reformatted with new, up-to-date information. And the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? Getting into the Word of God. Reading the Word of God. Learning the Word of God. Learning to confess the Word of God. When you're in a time of trouble, find out the scripture that, portray, uh, that uh, relates to your trouble that you're in. And start confessing it. And start speaking it over. And speaking it over. And as you do this, you are busy reformatting your hard drive. If you look in Jesus' name. And Jesus said, if you can believe. So you will get to a point of believing if you do that. If you can believe all things, not some things, but all things... All things are possible to him who believes. There's two incidents that I can remember, which uh, the family have heard before so many times. But there's two incidents that I can remember of. The one was when we were uh, in the ministry team at the Raymer Church, and, and uh, there was a, a healing line, and this young woman came up, and she was staring at me. And I asked her, what can I pray for you for? And she didn't answer me. She just stared at me. And I discerned demonic activity in her life. And the Bible tells us how you test the spirits. You test the spirits by asking. And if that spirit can't say that Jesus came in the flesh, Jesus is Lord and he came in the flesh, then that spirit is not of God. And I said to her, who is Lord? And she couldn't answer me. I said, who is Lord? And she couldn't answer me. And I put my hand on her head. I said, come out! In the name of Jesus, she fell to the ground. She was frothing at the mouth. She was rolling around and screaming. And it took us about 30 minutes. So all the other pastors ran out of the auditorium. And I think it was just me, myself, and one or two others left there. And we carried on for about 30 minutes. We even got rebuked by the church for doing this. But we had to do it. It's better to obey God than to obey man. And we kept on, come out in the name of Jesus. And eventually that demon let her go Amen. and she rose up and she was rejoicing. She ran about the auditorium oh, dancing. Yes. Do you remember that? Yes. In Jesus' name. And then another time, it was the service had finished. Uh, Pastor Ray had gone back to his office and for the next service and all the rest of it. And we'd been ministering to the people. And then somebody come running to us and said, is there a doctor in the house? Is there a doctor in the house? And, uh, and, and, and they came running to me and asked me, and I said to them, what's wrong? And they said, my father, I think he's passed away. And we went down, and I told one of the ushers, call for a doctor in the, in the house if there's one here. They were changing services, and 
Unfortunately, there wasn't a doctor available, and this guy, he was cold, he was white, he was clammy, his eyes were dilated, and I was feeling for a pulse, I couldn't feel any pulse whatsoever, and I thought, he's dead, he's gone. And I put my hand on his head, and Lee was with me, and I think Sue Coleman was with us. And I put my hand on it, and we confess the spirit of the race, Jesus from the dead, dwells in you, and he will quicken your mortal body. Come back in the name of Jesus. And he went, and he sat up in Jesus' name. And he sat up, and we ran. No, we didn't. No, I'm just saying it for the kids. The power of God. Hallelujah. That's right, in Jesus' name. So it's true. All things are possible to those that believe. Another time we went down, we were asked to go down to, uh, what's that clinic you go to with your knee? Karstenhoff. And uh, because there was a lady there and she got cancer and they only gave her, what was it, a couple of days to live or a couple of weeks. And we went down there, we couldn't find her. Yes. Oh, yes. We couldn't yes. find her. And I don't know how we did it, but eventually we traced her. She was at the uh, hospice in Pretoria. Yes, yes, that's right. Yes. And then we were going to go through to see her, and then they phoned us and said she's been discharged because yes. she wants to go home that's right. for the last couple of days that she's got right. left. Yeah. And we went round to her house, and we saw her, mm -hmm. and we sat with her, and yes. I shared the gospel with her, yes. and we built her faith I so she could get to that. a level of believing, and we laid hands on yes. her, and she lived for another 12 years. Yes, about, yeah. Maybe more, I don't know, she yeah. came here. Do you remember, what was she yes. called? Um, um, uh, uh, what's her elderly? Not he was called Ati, Ati and... I'll think of her name now. Yeah. They stayed in Edmund Extension. And she came and gave her testimony here, but I think she came on a Wednesday evening. When we she used used to come on a Wednesday, there. yes, to give testimony. Yeah. Hallelujah. So all things are possible to those that believe. All things are possible, I've missed one here, are possible to those who believe. But I think it's deliberate that I've missed one, because I want you to go to 1 John, the first epistle of John, towards the end of the Bible, in chapter 4 and verse 17, because it says something here that is quite, we're not quite sure how to, uh, how to take this, perhaps when we first read it. But in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17 it says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Remember I spoke about judgment last week? Because as he is, and some translations name who the he is, because as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Just as Jesus is, so are we in this world. But I don't feel like Jesus pastor. Jesus was the Son of God, you must remember this. Let me tell you, you must remember that you are the body of Christ. And He is the head. The Bible teaches us where His feet, where His hands, where His mouthpiece. And He said that He was going, and He said that when He's gone, the works that we see Him do, we will do, and even far greater works than that, we will do. So we must know that if we are Jesus in this world, we also have unlimited abilities we don't have limits on our abilities we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us in Jesus name why because all things are possible to those that believe so what's the problem Pastor Bob well the problem is that we put limitation on ourselves in various ways I haven't got the money to do it Pastor Bob I can't do it. Pastor Bob, if I was married to another man, I'm sure God would have used me in the ministry. <laughs> I was very careful how I said that. Because they told us in Bible school that uh, you must have a good wife because a wife will make or break your ministry. In Jesus' name. So let's have a look at this. Uh, us having limitations, we limit receiving from God. You see, God is without limits. Mm -hmm. And when we ask God, He gives in abundance. He blesses us wherever we go. Do you know the Bible says that blessings follow us wherever we go? And He blesses us. Yes. And He daily blesses us. Amen. He daily loads us with His blessings. Yes. You can read it. Yes. Yes. And uh, 
And, but we can't work this out sometimes. How's God going to do it? How's God going to do it? God can do it in a variety of ways. God can do it in all sorts of different ways. But we must understand that He can do it. And He's able to do it. And we must understand that He can give us the ability to do whatever it is that He wants us to do. I remember the one day at the Raymond Bible School and I had to get up and I had to preach. And there were several hundred people there, including the pastors. And I was sat back there, and I, I didn't know I was going to preach that morning. I went to Bible school, and I was sat there, and the dean of the college came in and said, Bob, you're preaching in an hour's time. Get a message prepared. And I get a message prepared quickly. And I was, I was stood there off the stage while they were introducing me, and I'm looking at all these people, Pastor Ray, and all these other people who are sat there. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I can't do that. I can tell you now, even today, before I come up and I preach, I've got butterflies in my stomach, and I'm saying to the Lord, Lord, without you, I can't do this. In Jesus' name. And you listen to the noise I make with the guitar, and I'm singing. <laughs> and, uh, and you would think to yourself, gee, but let me tell you something, God loves it. He loves us to humbly stand up and make ourselves available yes. to Him Amen. in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. In Jesus' name. So we need to break the limitations. The things that stop us. The things that hold us in prison. Yeah. The things that chain, chain us down. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Lee. She saw, I said to her the other day, it's time for her to prepare a message because she's, you know, since she's uh, been fighting with, with this thing in her body and she's now in remission, praise God, she's, we believe she's totally healed in Jesus' name. She hasn't preached very much, but she, before you, most of you heard her preach on several occasions. I can tell you something, before that, when we first became born again, when we first started, when I remember the first place I preached was to the tobacco yeah, farmers, tobacco farmers and Hazy View. Hazy View. The church was full of tobacco farmers. And then I come and I'm preaching with my accent. My accent was stronger then than it is today. And they're all Afrikaans. And, uh, and I had to preach them. But let me tell you, in those days, even to get me to pray a prayer mm -hmm. would have been a, a miracle, eh? But today she's quite bold. She'll pray for anybody. She'll pray for anybody. She'll counsel anybody. And I love her preaching. Oh, that's why I want her to preach more because gives me a break and it lets me sit under the word in Jesus name so we mustn't we must break off these limits we must break off these limits hallelujah in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name praise God praise God I want you to go in your Bibles to Mark chapter 2 Mark chapter 2 hallelujah Lord chapter 2, thank you Jesus, thank you Lord. No better relationship than the relationship with Jesus. No better life than to walk, the Christian walk. You know, when we were first born again, the preacher, he was preaching, and it was the first time we'd been in there, we saw them dancing and clapping their hands, and we couldn't understand all this stuff. And then at the end of the, his message, he said, if you don't want any more problems, get down here and give your heart to Jesus. And we went running down because he said, if you don't want any more problems. And we give our hearts to Jesus and we've had more problems ever since. <laughs> it's true, eh, isn't it? But the difference is when we've gone through the storm, Jesus is in the boat with us. Whereas before we had to sort it out ourselves. And Mark chapter 2, verses 1, verse 1 to 12. And again, Jesus entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Jesus must always be in the house. In Jesus' name, he must always be in the house. And again, he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately, many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. The place was jam-packed, and he preached the word to them. Then some came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not get, come near to Jesus because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. These guys, they were determined. They came carrying the paralytic on a stretcher 
and they couldn't get into the room, so they looked up, and the one guy said, come, let's take him up on the roof, let's rip the roof away and lure him down. And some of them ran away because they said, no, we can't do that. But he was determined, the four of them. And uh, it says, and when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. What a distraction for Jesus. He's preaching away. And all of a sudden, a piece of ceiling board comes down. <laughs> A piece of paint comes down here, some cobwebs and some spiders. <laughs> and they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed. Slowly they let him down. There's Jesus preaching. All of a sudden this guy comes down on the bed in front of him. Where did he come from? <laughs> yeah. I just thought I'd drop him. But anyway... <laughs> They let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately, when Jesus perceived, he discerned what they were saying, when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus, Within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? In other words, why are you trying to work this out? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise, take up your bed, and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man, think about this, I'm coming back to this just now, Son of Man, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. Let's just go back to verse 10. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth. The Son of Man. In the Bible, in the New Testament, when he's speaking about Jesus, often it refers to him as the Son of Man, and other times, the Son of God. When he's referring to him as the Son of God, he's speaking about Jesus in his divinity. When he speaks to him about, uh, uh, refers to him as the Son of Man, he's speaking about Jesus in his humanity. He went to the cross as the Son of Man. Yes, we know God sent him. But he went to the cross, he was tempted in every which way that we are tempted. And he took a beating and he went to the cross as the Son of Man. As a man, having been tempted with sin, but overcoming that temptation. Having been beaten up as a man, having his flesh torn and then nailed to a cross as a man, Son of Man. So where he says here, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power. What he's saying is, you can also have the same power. By walking in the anointing, by believing, by having faith, by having no limitations on what you will believe and what you will accept. Let's go to, oh, and where is this? Let me find it. I thought I had the scripture written down here. But I can speak to you about it anyway. Here we go. Let's go over a couple of pages to Mark chapter 5. Verse 24, he says, So Jesus went with him. He was going to go and uh, uh, this guy has come to him and told him that his daughter is uh, very sick at home and she's at the point of death and so Jesus was going to go with him. And it says in verse 24, So Jesus went with him, and the great multitude followed him and thronged him. Thronged him means they were getting knocked about a little bit because it was such a big crowd. And he says, Now a certain woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years, for 12 years she's been bleeding excessively. Verse 26, And she had suffered many things from many physicians or many doctors. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. 
When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and she touched his garment. I think in Matthew's version, he says, she said to herself, if I can only touch his garment, I will be made well. It, was, it says here as well. In verse 28, for she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. And when she touched him, immediately, verse 29, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And she was totally healed of the affliction. She heard the healer was coming to town. She was tired of having this menstrual bleeding on a regular basis continually and never stopping and the doctors being unable to help her. And she knew if I can get through to the healer, if I can get through to Jesus and just touch his garment, I will be made healed. I will be healed. I will be made well. Mm -hmm. And here we can see she fall through the crowd mm -hmm. and she right. pushed through the crowd. She had no limitations. She knew what she believed Amen. and she was determined that what she believed was going to come to pass. And guess what? It came to pass. Because she didn't place any limitations. She walked, where, I don't know how far she had to walk, to the place where Jesus was coming. And she got on her knees and she started working her way through the crowd until she could touch his garment. And when she touched his garment, Jesus, the Son of Man, felt power go out of him. Yes. And he said, who's touched me? Hallelujah. Who's touched me? And his disciples said to him, you see the multitudes pushing you around? And you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. And the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. I just believe Jesus. I heard you were a healer. I, I heard all the testimonies. And I just believe if I could get through the crowd and I could just touch your cloak, I would be healed. And verse 34, and Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. There was a woman without any limitations. I'm just being reminded now that when the angel came and told Mary that she was going to give birth and she said, but I haven't known a man. And, he said, and the angel said, don't worry. For, for uh, an angel is going to, for the Spirit of God is going to come overshadow you. And what is conceived in your wound is from God. She didn't start questioning it anymore. She turned around and she said, with God all things are possible. She had no limitations. That's why God used her. God will always use people that don't place limitations on themselves. Doesn't mean that if you limit, limit yourself in certain areas of your life or limit yourself in your walk with God, it doesn't matter that He love, doesn't love, or He loves you any less. He loves you just the same. But He's going to take you from glory to glory. He's going to take you from faith to faith. He's going to take you from strength to strength and help you to remove the limitations so that one day, instead of you being frightened to pray, Amen. He'll have you preaching. Yes, in Jesus' name, rise up and be healed in the name of Jesus. He'll have you preaching. He'll have you healing people in the mighty name Amen. Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I want to just tell you another story as we finish of another man that had severe limitations. And this is a story of a man at the pool of Bethsaida. And the Bible teaches us that this man... For 38 years, I think it was, right? 38 years. He used to go to the pool of Bethsaida, this guy. He couldn't walk, he was lame. And what used to happen at the pool of Bethsaida, which is... Uh, sorry? Which uh, um, obviously is in Israel. And the people who used to go there that were sick and infirm in any way. And what would happen? An angel would go down and stir the water. And then they would go down into the water and they would get healed of their affliction. And Jesus was coming past this pool one day. And he saw the guy sitting there. And Jesus said to him, don't you want to be made well? And the guy said, yes. But you know, every time I tried to go down into the water, when the angel st stirred the water, I kept bumped out of the way by the people that are rushing to get down there. And I can never get into the water. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, listen, take up your mat and be healed and walk. And he picked up his mat 
And he walked away healed, totally healed and restored. What Jesus was saying to this man was, you're putting too much limit on yourself. Yeah. You're limiting yourself. You're waiting for a man to come and carry you and put you in the water for you to receive your healing. And I'm telling you, you do not need the pool of Bethsaida. I'm telling you, you don't need a man to take you down and put you into the water. You need me. You need me. So pick it up and walk in Jesus' name. Take off the limitations. Put them away and walk. Yeah. And he was totally healed and totally restored in Jesus' name. So, what must we do? We must stop thinking with limitations. And the limitations, listen to me, they're your limitations. They're limitations you place on yourself. People can really look at themselves and usually usually it's because of when they've been growing up somebody has passed a comment mm. and it's stuck with them mm. and it's made them feel inferior or somebody has spoken to them don't ever tell your children you're stupid and you'll never amount to anything don't ever do that because that can stick on them and like it's glued to them and it can cause so much limitation in their lives in Jesus' name. Sorry? It's like an indelible pencil. That's right. Can't be removed. That's right. Be an encourager with your children and your wife or your husband. Be an encourager. Tell them, I know you can do it. I know you can do it. You can do it because all things are possible to those who believe. You can do it. You've got so much potential. Just let go and try it. In Jesus' name. Do you know that Colonel Sanders... He really made it, had his breakthrough at the ripe old age of, what was it, 70 something? 80. Yeah, was very old. But he had tried so many different things, loads and loads of things, and he had failed. But he kept on trying, kept on going, wouldn't give up, kept on pushing and pushing and pushing until eventually he became a success. And Jesus, now I'm just trying to think of the name of the one president in America. Who had been, they told him he'll never make a president, and he tried to get elected and he couldn't get elected, you know, as a governor and all the rest of it. He couldn't even get elected as a mayor, and he just kept on pushing, believing that he could do it, and eventually he was elected as a governor, and then eventually he became president of America. But I can't remember which one it was. Was it a Jefferson or somebody? I can't remember. So stop thinking within your limitations. Start seeing outside of your limitations because those limitations are fictional. Those limitations are lies from the devil to hold you back. And God wants you to push on. Stop thinking that you're always going to be poor. No, you're not always going to be poor. If you're obedient to God, you will prosper. And you will prosper in all things. God's greatest desire is for you to be blessed, to be a blessing to others in Jesus' name. Stop thinking that you'll never be able to do a, a, a job because you can do a job. If you've got a pair of hands and a pair of legs, just wait on God, trust God, keep believing God, and the job will come in Jesus' name. And if a job comes and you look at it and you think, I can never do that, guess what? You'll never do it. Look at that job and you think, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and do it. In Jesus' name. I was thinking of a relative of ours uh, who's, uh, who, who died in London. I'm talking about Martin, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, Martin. Martin, but not the Martin that you know. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and I remember he was, uh, he was a home mechanic. He used to fix cars, always struggling in life. Fix cars in, the, in his backyard and all the rest of it. And then one day... He, tried, he thought, oh, I'd better get a job, and he tried to get a job. And uh, he went to, I think, Toyota. They had a vacancy for, he had to travel around with a van, forklift, forklift yes. technician or something like that. He never worked on a forklift in his life. He's worked on cars. But when he went there for the interview, they said, can you work on forklifts? He said, yes. Never worked on one in his life. And he got the job, and he was all right doing it. So we have to put off the limitations and start thinking and speaking the thoughts and words 
of our Father who is without any limitations in Jesus name Amen and Amen praise God let's just close our eyes in Jesus name Father God we thank you that you are a God without limitations and I don't know about here in the church service today if there are people here that place too many limitations on themselves but I know for a fact there will be probably some people watching this on video in the coming weeks. And you know who you are. And you've limited yourself. Mm -hmm. There's a woman out there that she's a divorced woman. And she locks herself in the house. The curtains are drawn. The door is locked. Her son lives with her and he's got a key. He works. But she thinks she's not good enough to even go outside the front door. I want to tell you, my precious sister, you are good enough. You are good enough. You brought a son into the world. You brought him up. You've had to take care of him after your husband left you. And I want to just tell you now that you are able. You've had to take knocks. You've been pushed down and pushed back. But it's time for you to rise up. Isaiah chapter 60, I think it is, says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It's time for you to get off of the yes, Lord, to get off of that bed. You've been lying on your back bed with a back problem for so long, and you've used that as an excuse as to why you can't go out and face the world. It's time for you to rise up. Precious sister, call us. At the end of this video, our number comes up and you can call us and anybody else who needs counselling and prayer. Please, pick up the phone and call us and let us minister to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You know, when God looked at David, he didn't see a little shepherd boy. David was out looking after the sheep and God looked at him and he didn't see a little shepherd boy. What he did see one day was David rose up and he had to fight a bear who came to steal the sheep. And he killed the bear, bear or chased him away. And then another time he had to fight the lion. And God saw those things. And what God was looking at, when the time came for Saul to be replaced as king, he came, Samuel the prophet came along and he said to Jesse, Jesse, God wants me to anoint one of your sons as the king over Israel. Bring me your sons. And Samuel went down the line looking at all Jesse's sons. Some of them were big guys. Some of them were rugged guys. And he walked down the line looking at them. And he said to Jesse, now the one that God has chosen is not here. Have you got any more sons? And Jesse said, yes, I've got a younger son. And he's out in the field looking after the sheep. He's a shepherd boy. He's just a shepherd boy. And, Je and Samuel said to Jesse, bring him here to me. And Jesse brought him in and Samuel said, this is the one. And he said, because God does not see a shepherd boy, he sees a king. And it's the same with all of you. God doesn't see you in your limitations. God sees you without limitations. God sees you as able. God sees you as having his ability in you, his anointing. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And God's looking at every single one of you in this room today. And those watching by video. But now I'm speaking to the ones in this room, mainly today. God's looking at you and he sees your potential. You have the potential of God in you. And I don't care if you're 80. I don't care if you're 50. I don't care if you're 10. You have much potential in you. And God wants to work that potential. God wants to bring that potential out of you. So you keep on building your relationship with the Lord. You keep on lifting your hands. You keep on crying out to God. Bless you, Lord. I honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And you'll see how God will work in your 
life in Jesus' name. I had a precious friend who used to come to this church. He used to help me with the Greek language because he knew ancient Greek. He was from Greece himself. Spiro was his name. And uh, he used to help me with the sound and a few other things. But Spiro had this ability of being able to fix anything. No matter what it was, you could give him a watch. He would fix it. You could give him a car engine. He would fix it. You could give him a computer. He would fix it. You could give him a radio. He would fix it. If something went wrong at home, you could call him. He would come and he would fix it. He just had this talent of being able to fix anything at any time as well. In Jesus' name, he was a mighty man of God. He had no kidneys. We met him because they'd already taken out the one kidney. And he was having to go in for the other kidney to be taken out. And his family contacted, the, uh, no sorry, a guy that I went to visit asked me to go and pray for him. And I went to pray for him. And when I got to his house, he was bent over, shuffling to the door like this. The kidney they had taken out of him had weighed six kilograms. The other one they were going to take out was four kilograms. And he went to hospital, we prayed with him. He went to hospital. He had the other kidney removed. He had an after-death experience. He actually died. He had an after-death experience, which I haven't got time to go into and give you the testimony now. And then me and myself, we took him home and we nursed him for a couple of weeks. He's, he slept there by us and all the rest of it. And then eventually he went back to work. But Spiro had this ability to be able to fix anything and to be able to do anything. And I want to tell you, it's because he didn't have limitations in that area of his life. If you spoke to him and you said to him, can I or can you do this? He would straight away say, yes, I can do it. In Jesus' name. And so can you. There's nobody here this morning that doesn't have potential. Strip away those limitations. Stop thinking I can't because you can. See yourself. Don't see yourself as a failure. Don't see yourself as full of inabilities. See yourself as successful, as able to do it. In Jesus, Jesus, mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Petrus, come in. Do you think? In Jesus, mighty name. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, God's not dead. Many times when I have had my quiet time and I pray and I pray for many things for the church, the body, and that. And God always says to me, my child, I heard you, I'm not hard of hearing. Sometimes we think God's hard of hearing us and hearing our requests. Mm -hmm. But let me just tell you something. The Word of God says in 1 John 5, 7, uh, 1 John 5, verse, yeah, 1 John uh, chapter 5, verse 14, mm -hmm. this is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to His will, he hears us, and if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know we have what we ask of Him. Amen. So, you know what? Whatever whatever you've asked for, whatever you've asked for in prayer, God will honor you and He'll give you that. It doesn't matter what time um, that you've asked Him. Sometimes it can take years. If you've asked Him for something, sorry, my sweetheart. If you've asked Him for something and you've been praying and you've been trusting, you know, God honors that. God loves you to have built up your faith and knowing that whatever you've asked for, you're going to receive in Jesus' mighty name. It doesn't matter how many, 21, 22, 23, 24 years, God will honor that prayer and it will come to pass. Everything that you've asked for, according to His will, will come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Father God, we Thank come you, before Jesus. you and we bring, firstly, we want to... Uh, Speak to a Haven's family. We know yes. the precious little Haven. He's so rejoicing with his Auntie Sue and with Big JB in heaven, in Jesus' mighty name. So we just, our hearts go out to our condolences to you. Our condolences um, to the precious to Celestino Martin. family as well. Our hearts go out to you that your loved one is, praise God, Amen. has 
gone to heaven, is celebrating, has immigrated, has gone to heaven, and we're all so happy. We know she's rejoicing. The happiness that she perhaps didn't know on this earth, she now knows in heaven. And we give God all glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So, Father God, we come to you with every precious request here, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that we know that these people might not have to wait 23 and 24 years, Father. Yes. But it will come to pass, Father, Amen. for this year. It's a year Amen. of double portion. And we're just expecting, thank Father you. God, that those that we've prayed for are going to receive their request Lord, speedily, Father God. No more, uh, no more delay, Father God. But we know that you've accelerated every prayer request. Thank and you. whatever they've asked for will come speedily into their hands and into their lives, Father. We thank just thank you, you for Jesus. that right now in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for provision, divine alignment, divine yes, intervention, amen, supernatural amen. wealth transfer, supernatural debt cancellation. We thank you for new beginnings, new homes, Praise new cars. God. Father God, whatever you've promised, Lord, you are able to do. And we do not limit your greatness and your power. And we expect to see those things come amen. to pass. And those that we pray for daily, Father God, that you thank open you, the blind Lord. eyes, make the lame walk, thank the deaf to hear. Father God, you, we just thank you, Lord. You're going to surprise every Hallelujah. precious person with your goodness, Hallelujah. Father God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, thank Father, you, and Jesus. in the name of Jesus. We destroy and cancel out every assignment to the yes. enemy against us, our children, our church, our people, and yes. in Jesus' mighty Jesus name. name. But the blessing of the Lord makes rich, rich and he has no sorrow, sorrow to it. it. Father, we thank you. It's good measure, prayers down, shaken thank together, you, running Lord. over, shall men pour yes, into our bosom. So, Father, never mind about the hundredfold. We expect a thousandfold yeah. return yeah. to yeah. those precious people that sow and give Jesus and to our name. lives, Father, no and, and to us as well, Father. Amen. We thank you for the thousand roll, over a thousandfold return in amen. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Uh, Pastor, I just want to pray for Nadine and Joseph because yeah. their wedding anniversary as well. All right. So we'd like to, can you come up here? We'd like to pray for you and we'd also like to pray for strength for precious Nadine as well and her family. I'm not standing here. You're trying to dip the camera. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, that uh, you bless them with many, many more years of happy marriage, Father. And Father, we all go through ups and downs in Jesus' name, but we thank you that when Jesus is in the center of our relationships, there's always peace, reconciliation, and love. Put them one another first. We thank you for it. Lord, just heal the broken heart. Yes, no. Irene is not a part of our past, mm. but she's in our future. Thank you, Father. And one day we'll all thank be together you, rejoicing you, in your kingdom you, in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, just counsel the Celestino family. Strengthen them, Lord, and comfort them. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. That the Lord bless and keep you, make yes. his face shine upon you, be gracious to give you Amen. peace. Amen. Heal, Father God, heal every Thank broken you, heart. Father, every person that needs something today, just touch them with your Holy Spirit, Father, in the mighty name Jesus of Jesus. Name. Amen. And Amen. maybe you've been watching this video at home and uh, and you want to let go of those limitations. You want to live a life without limits in Jesus' name. You first got to come to Jesus. You need to invite him into your heart. So just put your hand out and just say, Father, I need Jesus in my heart. So Jesus, I invite you into my heart. Come take control of my life. I lay there my life to live for you. Amen, amen. That's all it takes. A born again believer in Jesus' name. And God with you, your cooperation, God will move all the limits Amen. on your life Amen. in Jesus' name. Till the next time, bye-bye.